Welcome back to the show, Corey Monty. How are you, dude? Good to see you. How are you, man? Very good. Welcome back. Thanks to Hat. Congratulations on your movie picture. Thank you very much. Is it, how much of it is, I mean, you growing up with a brother and all that, how much of it was you in that? Some of it. You know, a lot more of it was uh, actually my relationship with Dustin and... Because you've known him for years. Because I've known him for like nine years. And so it was, it was, it's just instantly fraternal. You know, when we get together, we're going to do this movie and we, we had so much to draw on. So it was, it was a really awesome experience. Now, from what I understand, it was a lot of the dialogue was just improv Yeah. All of it. All of it. All so of it was improv, yeah. Some actors are terrified of that reality, <laughs> especially if they're used to scripts. How yeah. are you? It, it seemed like everything I did as an actor is, is scripted. You know, I've done some films before and I did Glee and everything, and it's, it's super scripted, and this was the opposite. And he, Dustin called me and he said, do you want to do, do you want to play my brother in a film that Carl Besai is directing, who is work I love? And I was like, yes. I didn't even think twice. <laughs> On the phone with him, I'm like, yes, I'm doing this. And it's just... And then the next one, send me the script, and he's like, well, there isn't one. There's no script. It's just, it's, it's freedom. It's freedom, man. You know, like, you get, to, you get to explore. I sat down with my acting coach, Andrew, Andrew McElroy, and I said, you know, we, we built all this backstory for these characters and all this, like, life. You know, we got to do all this cool stuff. You don't get to do that a lot. Yeah. So it's, it was awesome. You need a certain kind of confidence to do this. Could you have done something like that four years ago? I don't know. What made it really exciting for me was that I, I, I've never done anything like this, you know, and I'm always about the next thing, the next job, the next challenge, you know, the, ed the edge of the cliff. Don't tell that to Eckhart Tolle, because you're supposed to be in the now, <laughs> right? In the now. Are you enjoying the now? The now is amazing. Yeah. It truly is. It's a really interesting, you're in that part of your career where there's a lot of exploration into, into the idea of the family dynamic. Yeah. The last time you were in that red chair, you said you were going to go off and find your dad. It's true. And you have found your dad. I found him. That, okay, look, most people don't say I found him and have a smile. So yeah. tell me what that thing was like, that process. Well, it was, it was incredibly, you know, it was incredibly gratifying to be able to, you know, reconnect with somebody that you, you I, that I had no connection with, you know, for, for so many years. So it was, it's one of the, I, I look at it as one of the best, one of the best experiences that, it, that have, have come from this, this whole, you know, explosion of. So your fame is what brought you two together in a, in a weird way. In a strange so way. So how did this, the genesis of this is he sends you a note? Basically, yeah, Facebook. He Facebooked you. Yeah, yeah. My dad MySpaced me. <laughs> Swear to God, my dad MySpaced me. Your dad Facebooked you. Yeah. Okay, so you know when you sign into your Facebook, yeah. you have X messages and you click on that little top left button and then uh -huh. you see, was it his name? Yeah, uh-huh. And it was, I mean, it's a, it's a real experience, you know, and it's, it's so much of... Where were you, the setting that... When you, that... I think it was on my phone. I think it was like the Facebook app or whatever. You Alone know, or with people? I was by myself. And I was, it, it, so there was a moment of reflection and it was like, it was, um, I mean, it was amazing. It was amazing that that, that that was happening. Do you know what I mean? So. Well, some people would feel like, oh, sure, because I'm on TV, now you reach out. Well, there's that, but it's, I saw it like an opportunity. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I saw it like. You know, and, and you, I don't want to, I don't, I don't ever want to look back on my life and, and have a history of, like, shutting doors on people. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and when someone comes to me, you know, you know, rekindling a relationship, it's, it's, I, I want to look back and, and, and have, have been, you know, uh, part of that relationship. Is that an evolution for you to get to this place? I think so. Yeah. It must be. Was there a time in your life when you carried more anger about it? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're a kid, you know, and you don't understand how things work, and you don't, you don't understand, you know. I think when I figured out, the evolution was figuring out that um, parents are just people too, you know. Parents are just people, they make mistakes. Are you making conscious choices now in your art to separate your, character, your characters from the guy that is in Glee? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I just want to show people, you know, whatever range I can show them, and I, I feel like I... I've lived a league of lives, you know, and um, done so many things and seen so many things, and and I just I want to do as much as I can. I want to push myself as far into as many characters as I can and do as many things as I can. This is a challenge, you know. I mean, that's what it's fun. What's up with the Glee thing right now for you? The Glee thing is yeah. it's huge. It's huger than ever. You if know? you ever wanted to leave the show, as they talked about you, they don't graduate <laughs> characters. People go crazy, and I know. characters have to come back. <laughs> I know. It's 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 the question of the ages. You know, it's what everybody wants to know. You know, 
it's so huge and it's it just it requires so much of that focus that I'm talking about that it I'm not, it never gets old it, there's always another challenge there's always another thing to figure out I mean I'll I'll stay as long as they'll have me yeah. that's kind of my vision to it but I at the same time I don't write the scripts so I'm kind of curious to see what happens Did, I, that article that you wrote I remember you told me that you had done an interview mm -hmm. and that you weren't sure what was going to happen when it came out. And then I read the interview <laughs> when it came out, and you just unloaded, man. Yeah. It was as if you were telling everybody all the stuff that you had done in your youth. Yeah. Bad stuff. Bad stuff. Criminal stuff. Criminal stuff. Uh, and I was like, what, why? my first thought was, did, what, why? Was somebody going to blackmail you? Why would you tell all everybody this? Well, what happened? I mean, there's, there's a couple different ways to look at it. Like, I always felt as if I was... People have always made a lot of assumptions. You know, you look, you see this, this uh, young all-American quarterback looking dude on the show and you just immediately make assumptions. And I think people started really identifying me with those assumptions, which is the media, and I understand that. But at the same time, I felt like I had to step in at some point and relate to people my experience and re relate to people the truth of, you know, my life and where I come from. And, and other kids can see. That's the other thing is, is you know, if I can, through my experience, shed light on the way out of a difficult situation that I'm, I know many kids are experiencing, you know, just like I did when I was a teenager, I mean, it's, that's, that's huge. You're in such an, you're so unique in this position that fame often leads to the disintegration of a person. But it seems like in your case, it's having the opposite effect. Like, you're, you're dealing with the dad stuff, dealing with this stuff. Hey, everybody, I'm not running from my past. I did some bad shit. Um, yeah. And, it, like, that, like, is this, are you on this long personal journey? Do you feel like it's a personal journey? Yeah. I mean, I just try and do the next right thing, you know? I just try and do the next right thing. That's all I can say is, and it's, when you, when you have, this whole fame thing is, it just seems like so many opportunities. I see it as so many opportunities, and there's, there are many opportunities to do the next wrong thing. Yeah, man, kids try drugs you know for lots saying? of reasons. All, lots of, what were your reasons? Well, it's just finding, finding, um, finding a place, you know? It, for me, it wasn't so much about you know, the substances per se, it was more about, about not fitting in. It was not having, um, uh, I, I, I hadn't found myself at all. I had no idea who I was, I had no idea where I was going, I was trying to, you know, and all of a sudden I was like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be this bad kid. And other kids are gonna be like, oh, he's the bad kid, and so he's cool, and so they'll wanna hang out with me. Do you did know what you, I'm did saying? You, did you see another guy in the neighborhood? Was there a guy in a movie? Like, how did sure. you cobble that together? Exactly, it was, it was just influences from watching people around me, you know? And it was just a lack of not really having a self-image at the time, it's, which is, that's like typical teenager stuff, you know? Yeah, but it's very real, right? It's real, and that's the thing, and it's like, so what I'm trying to do now with this whole, you know, I had a hard time thing, and my evolution out of that came a little later, you know, 1920 or so, but is to kind of impart to people struggling with the same stuff that like, you know, find something that inspires you, find something that you can get excited about, and that will become your new direction, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, is, the struggle to, is it a struggle to stay on that path, to stay clean, to stay in that road? No, man, I, I, you mean now? Yeah. No, it's, it's like, I just redouble my efforts on what I'm doing. Is yeah. there something that's missing in your life? Because you've become very good at being self-aware. Yeah. So can you identify some holes in your swing, as they say, to work on? Yeah, there's plenty. No, I, I see all, I, I, I'm actually super critical. I see all of my little mistakes. I, um, Is that still a self-esteem thing? No, it's not. It's just, it's, it's being self-aware, you know, or somewhat self-aware of some degree. You, you really know when you did well and when you didn't, you know, and I think, um, I don't know, where could I, where could I do better? Well, you I don't think, have to necessarily say it. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. it, of course, yeah. Did your father give you any advice when you were leaving? about how, to, like, you know, he could tell that you're a young man becoming a, you know, you're, you're a child becoming a man, you've, your life's changing, did he try to impart something upon you? I don't know, I think, I think I took so much, I took so much that from, so much that was unsaid from, from that experience, that, you know, I, I learned a lot. It really made it a learning experience, you know. Who cried first when he saw him? <laughs> Me. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, man, I'm not even kidding because that's a really, it's a very real. It doesn't get any more. But real it was for super minimal. Like I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty. I, it was like so. Tom Hanks movie cry. Tom Hanks movie cry, and it was like it was seriously like in the car. It was in the car, and it was like plink, and I was like, no, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like just totally, you know. Yeah. Is it nice to be behind the scenes, like behind, you know, the drummer just sit in the back and just lay I down? I love it. I love it so much. I've been doing it since I was tiny, and uh, we we just came out of the studio. We just recorded the drum parts and the guitar parts for three new songs. So we're gonna be releasing them like singles. We're gonna we're gonna shoot music videos for each of them and yeah. release them as singles on the internet, like viral distribution. I know, how about this? May I offer you this? Yes. You come bring your band on this show, play on this show, and really? then play a Christmas, a classic Christmas song for us and be a part of our big Christmas special. Done. Love that. That would be so good. It's gonna happen. I That's want that to happen. Thing to do. Who's the best drummer of all time? Keith Moon, John Bonham, or Neil Peart? John Bonham. All right. He hit hard, didn't he? Oof. Soul, man. Soul. When you remember when you first heard Zeppelin? Like I just, that time? I don't, I, it was, a, it was vinyl, first of all, it was on vinyl, because I was digging through the cabinet, you know, there was all these old records when I was a kid, and I was digging through the cabinet, and there was these records, and I just I put it on, and it was like, I couldn't even believe it. Phil Collins, best remembered as sensitive singer or underrated drummer? Underrated drummer. If you could be the opening act for any band, who would it be? Ooh, that's a hard question. Oh, right now? Uh, Jimmy Eat World. Nice. You 2 or Pearl Jam? Pearl Jam. First concert you ever went to? <laughs> Slayer and Pantera. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's so good. <laughs> That's um, true. Somebody steals your iPod, finds your iPod, and then realizes, because it's inscribed on the back, to Corey Monteith with love from whomever. Yes. Um, what's the one song in there that you'd be horrified that they know is on your iPod? Ooh. Um, Miley Cyrus or something. Do you sing along? Is that the song in the shower? Yeah, I said it quietly, so you got it in here. If you didn't hear it, it was Miley Cyrus. Um, so I just, it's really good pop music, okay? I mean, it's like, whatever. you know. Would you ever smoke salvia or whatever and, and get caught on video with her like that for fun? I don't even know what that is. Exactly. What is that? <laughs> Me neither. Um, As a Canadian actor in Hollywood, right, are you that or are you a Hollywood actor who happens to be Canadian? Canadian actor in Hollywood. Um, what do you miss the most about being here regularly? Um, so much, man. The people, the people. What's the most Canadian thing you do in Hollywood? Talk about how I'm from Canada at every <laughs> given opportunity. <laughs> Sisters and brothers is the picture. Corey Monty, everybody. Pleasure.